Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Pugarain the Vijay Raman. I'm uh, the clinical director of electrophysiology at the Geisinger Heart Institute in Pennsylvania, United States of America. And I'm the principal investigator of this study, which involved eight different centers, both US and international. Our study is left bone branch pacing for cardiac resynchronization therapy. So traditionally cardiac resynchronization therapy is performed with the biventricular pacing, which is a non-physiologic form of pacing the right ventricle and the left ventricle, and then creating a fusion wave front. So his model pacing became popular because it's a physiologic form of pacing that restores the native conduction, but this had been limited by higher pacing thresholds and also with lower success rate. So left bundle branch pacing is an extension of conduction system pacing where you pace in the proximal left bundle region beyond the site of the usual disease in the conduction system causing left bundle branch block. And the advantage is that the thresholds are relatively lower and the implant procedure is more successful and easier to perform. So this is becoming the next future of physiologic pacing. And this is uh, uh, caught on worldwide much faster than the hispal pacing. So our rationale is to see if left bundle branch pacing can improve the outcomes and can it have a safer, better threshold than hispal pacing in patients who require cardiac resynchronization therapy. So uh, the primary study population included uh, any patient with underlying cardiomyopathy with a left ventricular ejection fraction less than 50% and who had an indication for cardiac resynchronization therapy or a need for ventricular pacing at more than 40%. And um, these were uh, exclusion criteria were uh, pregnant women or age less than 18 years. And this was a retrospective uh, multi-center international observational cohort study. And it involved eight centers, four in the US and four outside the US, including Spain, Poland, Brazil, and India. So we included uh, 325 patients who underwent uh, attempt at left bundle branch pacing for achieving cardiac resynchronization therapy. We were successful in 85% of those patients. We found that uh, was unsuccessful in about 15% and more in those patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy and intraventricular conduction defects. And importantly, uh, the pacing threshold in this population was very low. It was at 0 0.6 volts at 0 0.5 milliseconds. And uh, follow-up was for a period of mean period of six months. And the complication rates were very low. Um, the lead dislodgement and loss of left bundle capture was only observed in 2.5% of the patients. More importantly, we were able to show that uh, left bundle branch pacing significantly narrowed the QRS duration from 152 milliseconds to 137 milliseconds, which was statistically significant. Ejection fraction improved from 33% at baseline to 44%, and associated with improvement in functional class from 2.7 at baseline to 1.8 during follow-up. Overall, other left ventricular parameters like an end diastolic dimensions, end systolic and end diastolic volumes are all improved with left bundle branch pacing. And these outcomes are, uh, there was greater improvement in those patients with left bundle branch block and those patients with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy compared to those with non-left bundle branch block or ischemic cardiomyopathy patient. Overall, the clinical response rate was observed, um, that is with no heart failure hospitalization or improvement in functional class in about 72% of the patients. 
there was an echocardiographic response increase in ejection fraction by at least 5% seen in 73% of the patient. More importantly, the super response rate where the LVEF normalized to above 50% or an increase by 20% points was observed in about 31% of the patients. I think compared to um, his bundle or even biventricular pacing, left bundle branch pacing is relatively easier. That's number one. And it seems to result in uh, comparable clinical outcomes. And more importantly, acutely we are able to assess whether uh, significant electrical resynchronization is achieved uh, with left bundle or his bundle pacing. So these are important factors that can help us choose this therapy over the conventional therapy in many patients. Um, but because biventricular pacing is such an established therapy with great proven outcomes, we need to do randomized clinical studies to show that left bone branch pacing is as good, if not better than biventricular pacing. So there are several, this is still a very early form of therapy. So first of all, scientifically, we need to understand left lung branch pacing in terms of choosing which are the patients who will do uh, very well with this form of therapy. So clearly what we see is that those patients with uh, left bundle branch block that is correctable with his bone pacing seem to do the best. Uh, and that's ability to identify those patients is important. And secondly, um, we need to figure out which group of patients where this therapy may not be beneficial. Some patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy, extensive scar, uh, patients who have uh, non-left bone branch block, especially the interventricular conduction defect. So those are things important. And lastly, we do need those randomized clinical trials comparing conduction system pacing with biventricular pacing uh, to prove which one would be better. And there is possibility that in some patients, a combination of um, both conduction system pacing and left ventricular pacing may improve outcomes.